I'm Dr. Jeffrey Knighton, Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs here at Gordon State College. On behalf of our outstanding faculty, staff, and students, I want to welcome you to our second annual State of the College Address. We are delighted that you have designated the time to attend this event and help us celebrate our accomplishments of this wonderful institution. Getting to this point in the journey required the assistance and commitment from each and every one of you in some way. To say it another way, it required the power of we. And that power of we is even more important during these extraordinary times that we find ourselves in. With this in mind, I would like to acknowledge the many elected officials with us here today. They're business leaders, educational leaders, and many other community leaders with us. In addition, there are several members of the Gordon State College Foundation Board with us. These are the people who represent those that provide and steward the philanthropic resources which result in scholarships for our students. To each of you, welcome. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. As the Vice President of Advancement, External Relations and Marketing, Ms. Montrese Adger Fuller is responsible for directing Gordon's Advancement, External Relations, Communications and Marketing activities. I present to you Ms. Montrese Adger Fuller. Good morning. My name is Montree Sadger Fuller, Vice President for Advancement, External Relations and Marketing. Welcome to our second annual State of the College Address. We are so happy that you all were able to join us today. We look forward to spending time with many of you throughout the year, but especially during this annual event. It is also a privilege to interact with such dedicated Board of Trustee members who have made such a difference and have provided so many opportunities for the Gordon State College students. At this time, I would like to recognize our Gordon State College Board Chair, Mr. Derek Lewis, and all of the trustees and emeritus members who are present today. Our Board of Trustees have made it possible for so many students to receive scholarship support through the Gordon State College Foundation. Many of our students have been able to receive scholarship support in the form of needs-based scholarships, student emergency assistance funds, and through gap funding to stay in school each semester and graduate from the college with their associates and baccalaureate degrees. On behalf of our faculty, staff, and students, we thank all of our Board of Trustee members for your continued generosity. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce you to one of our scholarship recipients, Mr. Elijah Clemens. Please help me welcome our outstanding scholar as he shares his words of appreciation and how the scholarship support has impacted his educational journey while pursuing his degree at Gordon State College. Good morning. My name is Elijah Clemens and I'm from Zebulon, Georgia. I'm currently a sophomore studying human services here at Gordon State College. I want to start saying thank you by everyone in the room showing your support of the college and being here at our State of the College address. I won't take up too much time and I know how excited we are to hear from our president, Dr. Kurt Nukes, but I will take a moment to share my gratitude. I am the recipient of the Kelly Hammond Mural Pike County Kiwanis Club Scholarship. Thank you to our Foundation Board of Trustees for your generosity. Because of you, I am able to continue my higher education journey here at what we call Highlander Nation. It is because of our board trustees, Umulana, our community, donors, family, and friends that students like myself are able to expand their knowledge and educational experiences here at Vion High School. Every day that I attend Gordon State College is a day closer to my dreams of being a community service worker and helping my community in any way I can. So again, thank you. You support the college and the students are greatly appreciated. Now you will hear from one of our presidential fellows, Mr. Harrison Bishop. Good morning. My name is Harrison Bishop and I serve as a member of the first cohort of presidential fellows. I'm a senior studying management and administration and hail all the way from Coweta County. 
Today, it is my pleasure to introduce the president of Gordon State College, Dr. Kirk A. Nooks. A New York native, Dr. Nooks is appointed to serve as the president of Gordon State College effective June 1, 2018. The 3,000 student college is one of 26 institutions within the university system of Georgia. Since his arrival, the college has launched a five-year strategic plan entitled Building the Power of We. Since then, the college has constructed and opened a $3 million one-stop enrollment center, had a record retention rate, which you will hear about today, and much more. His educational background includes a doctorate in higher education administration from George Washington University in Washington, D.C., an MBA in marketing, and a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Management from Mercer University in Macon, Georgia. Dr. Kirk A. Nooks and his wife, Allison, reside in Monroe County with their three children. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kirk A. Nooks. Well, thank you so much, Harrison, and good morning to everyone. It is indeed my privilege to have you tune in to the second annual State of the College Address. While we had hoped to have you join us in person, we decided to utilize a virtual format as it would allow for more supporters to listen in on the presentation. Again, to our trustees, our regents, uh, civic leaders, elected leaders who may be in the audience, welcome. Uh, this virtual format would also allow for several of our offices like IT and facilities to remain focused on providing the needed support to our faculty and staff and our almost 3,000 students studying at Gordon State College this spring. Ever since March of 2020, our faculty and staff have been going full steam ahead to ensure that our students receive the very best education, support, and service. We, like many of you, have been committed to putting one foot in front of the other. Uh, despite the pandemic, despite the racial unrest, despite the political turmoil, this has not been easy. You see, since March, every day has been filled with depressing news about something or something. I hope that for the next few moments, we can pause to listen in on some good news about Gordon State College. So. Today, we are here to do what Highlanders do best, move forward. In fact, we've been moving forward since last year when many of you attended the first State of the College Address. You remember how we made a commitment to our 14 County Primary Service Area, uh, that commitment of doing our part to better understand the desires of your high school graduates, the needs of local employers and the aspirations of local and civic leadership. You remember, how we mentioned that we have over 3,000 students who wanted to connect as your interns, your volunteers, and your hometown team. You should also remember that because we focused on our local footprint, that our success and your success are one and the same, hence the birth of this notion called the power of we. Uh, this phrase reminds us that you don't have to go it alone, that two heads are better than one, and we are in this together. You should also remember how we introduced our five-year strategic plan entitled Building the Power of We. Uh, there were three strategic imperatives that provided a framework for a series of objectives and then goals underneath those objectives. So today, I will provide an update about how this institution, through a talented and determined group of faculty, staff, and students, continued to build even during a global pandemic. Strategic Imperative One calls for the college to establish a distinctive identity built on a collaborative campus culture supported by our institutional values. We explained last year that we would accomplish this by increasing internal communication efforts, building institutional capacity and stability in key areas while celebrating excellence across campus. Highlighting Objective 1.2, we continue to determine and monitor data points in comparison to our peers. And this year, Gordon State College continues to rank and remain one of the leading state colleges in our region. As of this year, uh, we've been ranked in the top 20 for three consecutive years among US News and World Report's top public schools in the regional colleges South category. We were also ranked number five for the 2020 Best Nursing ADN Program in Georgia and number four for the online RN to BSN program. 
when it comes to uh, economic impact, our institution has contributed more than 137 million to the regional economy and provided over 1,100 jobs. Lastly, I would like to point out that this past fall, Gordon State College had the highest overall retention rate for our first time full-time freshmen with 61.7 returning after their first year. Uh, the improvement is noteworthy given the COVID-19 pandemic pivot to remote instruction in fall 2020. This is outstanding news and a tribute to the collaborative efforts of our faculty, staff, and students. Gordon State also experienced a record summer headcount. Over the last five years, Gordon has experienced uh, enrollment hovering in the mid to high 800 headcount. And in 2018, the school reached a mid, you know, mid 900 headcount. I'm proud to say that this previous summer, 2020, despite the global pandemic, we had a record headcount of 1,006 students. Yes, I'm going to count the six students. This is a 13% increase from summer 2019. Now, without your dedication and support, Gordon would not have seen such numbers. Objective 1.3, we continue to design a strategy for launching and enhancing marketing and communication efforts. Now, one of our major accomplishments in this area was a redesign of our college spirit mark and mascot. With a series of committees, surveys, and focus sessions, the final decision was to remain the Highlanders. But as you can see, we've retired our good friend Harry and have created a new spirit mark that represents Highlander Nation and will serve as a visual symbol of strength and pride for our college for many years to come. Now, as a quick history lesson, the stag is symbolic of the badge worn by the Gordon Highlanders. Uh, they were a line infantry regiment in the British Army that existed for over 113 years after two Scottish regiments merged in 1881. A crest uh, with a stag in the motto Bidan, which means stand and fight, was also featured as a part of the badge. Hence, we ended up taking something old and giving it a fresh approach. Now, the mascot rendering captures the essence of what Gordy, that's the name we selected with the students and, and others, what Gordy will look like at athletic and community events. So if you visit our YouTube channel, you can still watch several videos about the reveal process that took place during the summer. Over the last year, Gordon State College has seen significant growth in its social media engagement. Altogether, among four of our standard social media platforms, Gordon has gained over 3,500 followers. The college's communication plan resulted in being mentioned over 30 times through multiple streams of media in the last year to include the Atlanta Journal-Constitution and higher education's leading national paper, The Chronicle of Higher Education. A special thanks to our media friends in the audience today. Now, under objective 1.4, as we continue to craft a compelling case for support, which can be accessed following this event, uh, we are delighted that at the January 2021 Board of Regents meeting, Gordon State College was approved to launch our first Nexus degree uh, in film production and also approved to join the E major consortium for the Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice. Now, the Nexus degree will offer future graduates the ability to continue making movies for the small and the large screens right here in this region. The criminal justice degree will provide more opportunities for law enforcement professionals to continue pursuing their dreams close to home. After approval from our regional accreditor, SAC COC, we will begin to offer these degree programs. We are also uh, excited because we completed the official accreditation visit for our health information management program. Now, while we're awaiting the final determination, our commitment to aligning with the highest standard of programmatic excellence will continue to extend to other programs on campus, so stay tuned. Now, under objective 1.5, we require the institution to stabilize and align the organizational structure or institutional budget and operating policies. Our finance and administration team, they've been doing a fantastic job working nonstop to ensure Gordon State College has a budget that reflects where we're going, not necessarily where we've been. Uh, one of the key adjustments was balancing our dependence 
on fee revenue versus tuition and state funding. So after careful evaluation and many hours of analysis, we've been able to successfully rebalance over $200,000 back into our general budget. This is very important work. We have also started the process of reviewing and updating our operating policies. Now, while it may not sound as attractive as other goals, it is critical that our policies reflect the current realities and incorporates the vision of building the power of we. By the end of this semester, the President's Cabinet will have reviewed and updated a total of 68 policies to ensure they reflect our future direction and meet our five-year review expectation. This past year, uh, Objective 1.7 reminded us how critical it is to recruit, retain, and transition professionals through a process that supports and emphasizes the institutional values. Now, after the events that took place last summer across the nation with American citizens, uh, such as George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, just to name a few, we in Highlander Nation wanted to ensure we did our part by addressing any of our issues or concerns that would hold us back from building the power of we. We're, we were not in a rush to make any decisions, but we rather engaged our campus community in a series of dialogues. They all started back in August of 2020, and these were designed to better understand the issues and each other's lived experience. So through a presidential commission on diversity, inclusion, and equity, largely composed of Highlander Leadership Academy Cohort 1 and Cohort 2 members and students, a report will be issued in March 2021 to address how we can successfully ensure all members of our community can stay connected, can feel comfortable and welcomed at this institution. Under objective 1.8, we continued our quest to ensure that college faculty and staff are provided with at least one professional development opportunity aimed at expanding and understanding uh, their role. So this past year, uh, we uh, are all no stranger to having to adjust and accommodate how we operate due to the global pandemic. Now for Gordon, this meant exploring ways that we could continue to provide excellent education to our students despite the possible distance. Our faculty, they've always been passionate about the need to ensure our in-person and our virtual environments mirror each other. In fact, in order for a faculty member to teach virtually here, uh, they had to go through a professional development model module that uh, they had to complete. Now, that module took anywhere between 12 to 15 hours. Hence, we take pride in the fact that this past year, 100% of our faculty received their online accreditation to teach their courses virtually. Our commitment to a quality education speaks for itself. The commitment to our value of being a lifelong learner also extends to our staff. Gordon has continued to virtually offer what we call Gordon Opportunities for Lifelong Development, GOLD, uh, for our faculty and staff. Now, since we last saw each other back in January 2020, we've offered over nine seminars with 130 faculty and staff receiving professional development education right here on this campus. Objective 1.9 reminded us to stop and reflect on the positives amidst the chaos. Now, despite our challenges, uh, we needed to acknowledge and celebrate the accomplishments and milestones of the Highlander Nation family. So in August, with the generous support of our foundation, we awarded our inaugural set of GSC Foundation Faculty and Staff Awards. This year, the foundation awarded $1,000 to one faculty member and one staff member based on their outstanding work and dedication to Highlander Nation. So congratulations again to Ms. Joy Matthews and Dr. Amanda Duffus for being selected for this honor. But it doesn't stop there. Uh, to close out our first strategic imperative, we were honored and excited to hear that Gordon State College had four of its faculty selected for the third cohort of Chancellor's Learning Scholars. Now selected by the USG, our Chancellor's Learning Scholars will facilitate five faculty learning communities during this semester. Uh, these supportive communities are designed to give small groups of faculty, usually eight to 10 members, the opportunity to engage in sustained, meaningful conversations about teaching and learning. So congratulations to Dr. Christina Berman-Ennis, 
uh, Melissa Harrison, Dr. Brent Johnson, and Dr. Scott Schubitz. Our work surrounding Strategic Imperative 2 underscores our focus to promote student excellence throughout the academic journey. Now, this journey starts before they arrive at the Gordon State College campus and extends past that ceremonial handshake they will receive at commencement. Last year, we discussed the impact of Objective 2.1 and the need to develop and implement a comprehensive strategic enrollment management plan. Now, yes, we were well aware of the need to align our academic programs to the need of the region. Yes, we were preparing for the higher education cliff that was coming in 2025. But like many of you know, we, we were not planning for a once in a lifetime global pandemic. Yet we remain committed to our goals. So as we continue to increase the awareness that we at Gordon State offer more than just the associate's degree here at the college, we aim to have an enrollment plan where 70% of our students will be pursuing their baccalaureate degrees right here at Gordon. While we continue to navigate these treacherous enrollment orders, we are pleased to see that by semester by semester, year over year, we have successfully increased the percentage of students earning their baccalaureate degrees. The blue bar represents 2019 and the gray bar represents 2020. Speaking of those who have earned their degrees, we want to take a moment to say congratulations to the students who have graduated and who are now alumni of higher, uh, Highlander Nation. Now, COVID-19 may have temporarily stunned the world, but it did not stop us from celebrating our students. In May 2020, we had 81% of our graduates hail from 13 out of the 14 primary service area counties. Uh, there were 46 first-generation college students, and the most seasoned graduate back in May was 67 years old. In December 2020, 38% of our graduating class, they were adult learners, and the youngest graduated as a dual enrollment student at the age of 17, earning their associate's degree. With the graduate count from last spring and this past fall, over 550 Gordon State College Highlanders completed their journey and moved forward with a Highlander edge. Talk about resilience in the face of adversity. Objective 2.4, uh, identify, define, and align the elements of the Highlander edge. For those of you who are new to Highlander Nation, the edge is an acronym which stands for Engage Innovators, Dedicated Scholars, Gifted Communicators, and Ethical Leaders. This is the approach that will separate us from other institutions. Uh, to ensure that this is wired into our DNA, this year we put a task force of faculty, staff, and students uh, who are currently developing our roadmap of experiences and milestones. We will unveil their recommendations in the coming months, and we are thrilled about what this will mean for our graduates and their future employers. As a tangible example and early glimpse, Ms. Hannah Norwood, a junior history major at Gordon State College, was recently named the recipient of the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, Benjamin A. Gilman International Scholarship. Now that is a mouthful. She is Gordon's first student on record to receive this $3,000 award. Norwood, who, who graduated from Spalding High School, you go Spalding, in 2018 is currently taking classes in Wales for this spring semester. She's interested in political science and history and will be taking a full load of courses that will transfer back to Gordon. She is certainly demonstrating the dedicated scholar and gifted communicator elements. For the businesses in today's session, imagine having her as your future intern or employee. Now, for those of you who are getting ready to arm wrestle over Hannah, have no fear. Objective 2.5 was designed to scale other co-curricular experiences to increase student engagement and development. For the third consecutive year, Gordon State College's African American Male Initiative, AAMI program, has received full funding from the University System of Georgia. AAMI was awarded $15,000 so we can continue to turn stellar scholars of today into the extraordinary leaders of tomorrow. Last year, our young men posted some of the highest retention and graduation rates within their group. 
We're so proud of the work they do, Ryron Trailer for his leadership and others who make this a reality. Objective 2.7 helped to respond to our students' desire to be developed as leaders and more engaged on campus. So one example from this year is we established the inaugural Presidential Fellows Program that's allowed five students to grow in their leadership and serve as ambassadors for the Office of the President and the college. The Presidential Fellows get the opportunity to develop their leadership potential through unique exposure to on-campus events, work assignments, and other educational opportunities. Now, we're grateful to have students such as Michael from Butts County and veterans like Harrison, who introduced me from Coweta, uh, who served in the United States uh, Air Force. Uh, we also have talented women such as Amber, who's a biology major, and she wants to work in uh, pharmacies and hospitals because in her future, she is going to be a pharmacist or a biochemist. But we also have other students like Mr. Robinson and, and Mr. Uh, Stevens who are studying business management and biology respectively, and they will later on become leaders in their home counties of Macon, Bibb, and DeKalb. Strategic imperative number three was created with many of you in mind. Our local and elected leaders, our community partners, um, our education ecosystem colleagues, our our employer community and our extended Highlander family, meaning the foundation and alumni. When we drafted this plan, we were passionate about the need to strengthen community engagement and partnerships. Today, we remain committed to this endeavor. Objective 3.1 was our first indication that a more steady and predictable flow of information would be shared with our stakeholders to yield a deeper understanding of the institution and its needs. In addition to events like this morning, on December 10, 2020, we hosted the second annual Legislative Roundtable. Now, due to the context of the pandemic, very similar today, this year the college hosted 10 state senators and representatives in a virtual format. The conversation focused on four legislative priorities, and I'm, I'm pleased to see the progress that is currently being made on keeping the college um, affordable, the carry forward legislation, the acknowledgement of small cap projects throughout the system and the possible funding to keep our buildings and systems functioning on a routine basis. A major thank you to all of our elected legislators who are on the call today uh, or who are not on the call today. We, we honestly, we at Gordon State uh, appreciate your work and your efforts because we are your state college within the university system and we cannot be successful without your continued support. Objective 3.2 reminds the institution uh, that we do not exist in a vacuum. Now, at a time when our nation um, are engaging some of the conversations of cost versus benefit uh, related to higher education, you see the narrative seems to be taking on a singular focus. What do you mean, Kirk? Well, some people are saying the cost of education is too high or students cannot get jobs and are crushing or crumbling under the weight of college loans. And some people are saying faculty and staff are largely focused on the needs of the institution or, or worse, themselves. While I can agree that some institutions might deserve uh, some of the heat they're receiving, I can tell you firsthand that Gordon State College is interested in the quality of life for this region. We believe in the power of we, and since March, we have been working hard to support the region during this nasty pandemic. It is no secret that Gordon State College loves its 14 county primary service region. So, so when the pandemic hit in March of this past year, uh, and some of the hospitals, nursing homes, and school districts were in need of PPE, we had a team of faculty, staff, and students people like Alan Scouten, people like Victor Vilches, who, who, who came together to make and deliver face shields to our region. We, we, we thought about the, the quality of life and that's when our nursing faculty, Samantha Bishop and others, put on their capes and masks and went into the hospitals or into the community to assist, to wage war on this virus. We thought about the quality of life and that's when we created virtual theater performances. And people like Lisa Ferguson and Tony Pearson came together because they wanted to make sure that we could read virtually uh, and, 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 and perform virtually. 
That's why we went caroling through the town during the holidays, because we wanted to remind others that this virus will not win. We thought about the quality of life when our nursing faculty, again, and our nursing students volunteered to work with Sherry Farr and her amazing and magnificent team on the vaccine rollout process. We thought about the quality of life when we created our coronavirus task force, chaired by Matthew Robinson and, and others, uh, other faculty staff, and even community health experts, because we wanted to make decisions at this college focused on keeping not only the campus, but our community safe. Because we realize what impacts Charles Glass in Lamar County, or what impacts Peter Banks and, and the city of Barnesville will impact Kirk Nooks and Gordon State College. As a point of personal privilege, I wanted to again thank the college's leadership team, Jeff Knighton, Montrese Adra Fuller, Megan Davidson, and others. Uh, I wanted to thank our faculty, our staff, and our students, because we've been working nonstop ever since March to navigate this evolving challenge. You worked insane hours of the day and night. You worked through your own personal illnesses and family And you experienced the most horrific effects of this pandemic when you lost fathers, when you lost mothers, close relatives, and friends. I want to say thank you for your patience, your leadership, and your dedication to get through some of the darkest periods of this experience. It is not over but it is encouraging to know what our team is made of. A special thank you to those on today's call who have also played a critical role in helping Georgia remain safe and healthy throughout this pandemic. We salute you as well. We mentioned last year that through Objective 3.3, we would continue to evaluate and determine faculty space needs, uh, facility space needs, excuse me, on and off campus. Uh, we wanted to make sure that not only we had what we need for our current, but also our future programs. So this past year, August of 2020, Gordon State College celebrated the reopening and ribbon cutting for our academic building. The 28,000 square foot academic building on the east side of our campus is home to our humanities department. Now, this would not be possible, again, without the generosity of our state elected officials. More specifically, we want to throw out a thank you to District 130 State Representative David Knight and our Foundation Emeritus Board Member and District 140 State Representative Robert Dickey. Thank you for your continued support of these renovations and small cap projects on our campus. We have one more project to go and the campus will be complete. Uh, we also take significant pride in Objective 3.4 because we can honestly say that we're actively nurturing the education ecosystem approach with our K-12 partners. During our fall superintendents roundtable, we had 14 out of the 15 superintendents engaged to review the data surrounding the college going rate. Now, I just, I just fall head over heels uh, for our superintendents who are in the region. You all are all fantastic. Now, the effects of the pandemic on last year's graduating class and likely this year's class are very visible. That's why our school boards, our chambers, our employers, our city and county leaders are depending on us to make sure that all of our students, all of our students have the support they need to pursue their goals. Thank you to all of the superintendents in the region for being so responsive when I call or when I text. Also, thank you for paving the way so that Gordon State College's First Lady, Allison Nooks, can also give back to the community one book at a time. Now, she has made it her mission ever since 2018 to read to children and encourage healthy character building. This year, she has read to second grade classes in, get it now, Clayton, and Fayette, and Henry, Lamar, Macon Bibb, Meriwether, Monroe, Pike, Spalding, and Upson counties. Gordon is thankful for the work you do, Mrs. Nooks. Again, because we are in a pandemic, it doesn't mean that we cannot find a way to connect with our future Highlanders. Objective 3.5 identifies how we will expand the education ecosystem 
to include our higher education partners with a focus on increasing the regional completion rate. Now, last year, we had the privilege of sharing excitement about our higher education partners to include Fort Valley State University, Mercer University, Southern Crescent Technical College, uh, and Georgia College and State University. Those partners largely focused on two plus two articulations where students start with us and then transfer after completing the associates. This year, we turned our attention and our focus to our baccalaureate students who will make the decision to pursue graduate degrees. Now, last year, we formed a partnership with Georgia Southwestern State University where our students can complete their master's in business administration in just one year following their time at Gordon. In the coming weeks, we will finalize an agreement with Clayton State University to allow our BSN graduates to pursue their master's degree just up the road from us. Objective 3.6 is all about our outstanding foundation board and how they are building philanthropic capacity to assist the institution with achieving our goals. Our foundation board has stepped up in a mighty way to support the college and our students during this pandemic. For example, the Gordon State College Foundation, they approved an allocation of funding to support the priorities of the college's strategic plan, submitted as a recommendation by the Board of Trustees Executive Committee and subsequently approved unanimously by the entire board. The GSC Foundation provided a one-time $100,000 grant to Gordon State College. And this was just a strategic investment during this COVID-19 pandemic. It included support for scholarships, the performing arts, and athletics. A critical central building block of this grant was a $50,000 allocation to fully endow the Highlander Gap Scholarship Grant Fund. During this past year, 39 students received funding of this type of last dollar scholarship. Thank you again to our Foundation Board of Trustees for your continued support of our students. Thank you again. Last year, our foundation also made a commitment to model the way for philanthropic leadership. They accomplished that with a two-year average of 93% participation during the annual giving campaign. They inspired our faculty and staff to rise to the challenge, and rise they did. Over the last three academic years, we have seen a continued increase in the participation rate of faculty and staff giving. This annual campaign year, we reached a record high of 80.9% of our faculty and staff giving back to the institution. I can't say thank you to our faculty and staff enough. But we must admit, the spirit of philanthropy was kicked off early this past uh, last year when one of our board members, Mr. Dan White, committed to the largest donation in the history of the foundation, over $250,000. The gift will be designed and designated toward a combination of eight endowed scholarships, an endowed lecture series, and to be able to um, provide an endowed fine and performing arts series fund. I'll note that Dan has not stopped, and recently he has donated his limited edition maquette of FDR to the college. Dan, we salute you for continuing to help us move forward. When you combine all of the aforementioned good news, of course, you would, be, you would be thinking that we're going to announce some sort of total that we've increased, and that's what we're going to do. We've got a total amount of giving for last year of $660,000 in contributions. This is a $100,000 increase from the previous year. Again, thank you for your support. Objective 3.7 is where we remind everyone that whether you graduated from the military college or Gordon College or Gordon State College, we will partner with the alumni board to build collegiate affinity linked to the institution. This is why we're proud to highlight the expansion of our alumni board. Now, Gordon State College has increased its board from six members to 13. Our board includes Highlanders from our military school days to more of our recent college graduates. The expansion will allow for more perspectives and people to ensure we all reach out to Gordon graduates from Bulldogs all the way to Highlanders. Finally, objective 3.8 confirms our commitment to develop meaningful and productive relationships 
with, with our employers throughout the 14 county primary service region. Recently, our career services department has provided our students with a system platform called Handshake. Now Handshake is a career management system that connects students with open positions, mainly internships and entry level jobs. The platform streamlines the, the matching process for employers, career counselors, and student candidates. 73 students have established profiles to date. 606 jobs have been posted in the system for students to review since we launched this platform in October of 2020. But that Handshake platform is just a technology that really represents the relationships that we have with external partners through our six advisory boards. Each advisory board continue to meet virtually and will meet again this semester to discuss how Gordon can continue to prepare our students to meet regional workforce needs. So yes, Gordon State College has been pretty busy during the second year of the strategic plan, but we will not stop there. We're planning some exciting things for year three of building the power of we. Big ideas will likely make it into uh, this plan and, and some of those uh, for the third year uh, might include like the rolling out of the Highlander Edge via technology. You see, we want our students be, to be able to know where they stand and how much progress they're making with obtaining the Edge. So through a package called Presence, our students will be allowed to track their event attendance and, and their learning outcomes. Uh, they will eventually produce an electronic portfolio to tell their unique story to graduate school admission professionals or to workforce employers. In this coming year, we will also leverage our newly implemented course scheduling software to lay out the best sequencing and timing of our classes. Now, this approach will increase the availability for some courses or reduce the time conflict among others. This more efficient schedule will focus on the needs of our students and the lives they lead. Our always alert system will receive a refresh and will be powered by a well-known data informed and intuitive software called Navigate. Yes, it was helpful to have students know that they were in academic trouble, but it's a game changer when a predictive analytics software system can help you with warning indicators before they actually get to that point. We will increase our philanthropic opportunities and awareness. Uh, gone are the days when we can sit back and just depend on funding to be set aside for the college. There are too many competing funding interests at the varying levels of government. So in addition, we, we don't wanna be the best kept secret. So many of you in this session would make an investment or you, you might even pledge a gift to Gordon if you knew what we needed. Well, at the conclusion of this address, your thank you email will include links to our case for support documents. Once you review the documents, you will see ways you can help the college and our students, and we will recognize your contributions in ways that match the size of your investment. Partnerships with K through 12, that's going to be a mainstay. But we must ensure that each of our graduates have the ability to access their dreams. Each graduate has value. Each graduate should know that higher education is an option and it is within their reach. In fact, we will be working with the Georgia Partnership for Excellence in Education in the coming month to develop a regional summit focused on the post-secondary pipeline. So stay tuned for the information in the coming weeks. Wow, that is a lot of information. But again, we wanted to thank you for joining us virtually today. We know that your time is limited and you could be doing so many other things. We wanna encourage you to keep in touch with us and that's via social media. So please do. We wanna thank you for tuning in to our second annual State of the College Address. Be sure to follow us on the social media platforms provided in front of you. You'll be receiving more and more information. So again, we honor you. Thank you for joining us. And as we always say, Islanders, 